Until you have a sprained ankle or a torn ACL, most of us go about our lives without even thinking about walking. Cerebral palsy is caused by an injury to the brain or central nervous system around the time of birth. Cerebral palsy often results in abnormal walking pattern. The goal of this research project is to definitively demonstrate that simple, lightweight, wearable robots can improve walking efficiency in children with cerebral palsy. Our goal is to use this as a training tool so that one day they can walk without it. When Jackson was born, he was three pounds and 11 ounces. Times would come for Jackson to maybe start to crawl or to walk, and he just wouldn't. Looking back, I can see that those were signs of cerebral palsy, but we didn't know that he had that at the time. I notice when I'm playing on the playground, my friends are faster than me because my legs are still kind of recovering from my last surgery I had. There are three primary standard of care treatments. The first is in highly invasive orthopedic surgery. While effective at reducing the most severe cases, doesn't solve the issue. By demonstrating the utility of this technology, we may be able to design these early interventions. That's what we're going for right now with this study. The Biomechatronics Lab is a lab that I started here on campus about a year ago. Here in my lab, we're designing pediatric-specific wearable devices, so pediatric exoskeletons. Wearable robotics are powered devices that augment human function. So they're used to improve performance, improve mobility, uh, they can enhance rehabilitation. Basically anything that works synergistically with a human is a wearable robot. So for our design, we focus on making it as lightweight as possible. What this means is we kind of sacrifice some of the modularity and the setup time required is increased because everything's so customized. Without that customization, it's very likely that we're making walking more difficult. It amazes me because this is an exceedingly simple system. Everything about it is very basic, yet it is effective. It should be close to zero. Yeah. Oh, you see? Okay. That way. How long do you have the time? Just a, yeah, two minutes. We're ready. We have them walk with the assistive device, providing a certain level of assistance. And we repeat the process while we change how much assistance we're providing. We're measuring how the body moves, but also how much energy the body is consuming. And we measure that by a little face mask, so we can record how much oxygen someone's breathing and how much CO2 they're producing. We use motion capture cameras and reflective markers to quantify how their joints are moving. Starting new capture. We are speaking about uh, something that the participant wears and interact with. There is this kind of handshake between uh, the system and the participant. All right, now we're walking back. Nice job. So yeah, this is kind of dance. All right, ready, Jackson. We're gonna slow you down in three, two, one. All right. Let's get the Superman that one. How you doing? How'd that one feel? Good. Is it rough? Or is it okay? It's okay. It's okay. It's really important for us to come up with a solution that will span across this continuum of walking ability. We have three participants partaking in the study right now. One of them is Jackson, and we have Waylon. These two participants are partaking in the study so we can answer this early intervention question. So how young would the use of a wearable robotic device make sense? 
really we want to come up with a solution that has utility for young children who are still able to walk relatively normally, as well as for older individuals like Mariah who have more trouble walking. Unfortunately, cerebral palsy is a condition um, with no known cure and there's really no anticipated cure. But what we are trying to do is make it possible for someone with cerebral palsy to live a more normal or ideally a completely normal life. In 10 years, I think wearable exoskeletons will be not only increasing their mobility, how they navigate around their community, but also in improving their underlying function so that one day they can walk without it. They don't have their choice if they were born with cerebral palsy or not. But we have a responsibility, I think, to them to make it the best life possible. I think one of the greatest things that Jackson has taught me about life is that nothing's too hard. And that even when you have things that hold you back or set you back, that that doesn't mean that you can get any less out of life.